Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson, we are going to continue the implementation of the lesson detail component. As we do so, we are going to be discovering something fundamental about the behavior of the Angular router that we did not yet come across before during the course. So let's switch here to the template of our lesson detail component and let's continue its implementation. So the first thing that we're going to implement is the back to course button. So when the user clicks on this link, we want to show again here our lessons list. So the lesson detail component is going to get displayed whenever we click in one of the entries of this list, replacing here the lessons list. But when we click here on back to course, we want to show again the lessons list. Let's then display on the screen the component that we are implementing, the lesson detail component. Let's click here, for example, on Angular Router Setup, and this is going to display here the detail component. Let's start then by the implementation of the back course button. As usual, we are going to implement this router navigation operation using the router link directive. Now, let's take here from the browser address bar the current address. As we can see, what we want to do is we want to navigate from this current address back to one of the parent routes. So we want to navigate to this address here, removing slash lessons slash free. So if we check here our routing configuration, we are going to see that that address is going to trigger the course component that we already see here on the screen, but via here the empty path, the lessons list component is going to get displayed in place of the lesson detail component. So if we navigate to this parent route, we are going to essentially show again the lessons list instead of the lesson detail. This means that starting here on this URL, we want to navigate to the parent route, which should correspond here to this URL and from here we want to again navigate to the parent route so that would correspond here to the angular router course path. Let's then take this navigation path and we're going to apply it here to the router link directive. Let's pass in here an array, let's define here as a navigation element a string and let's access here this parent route. So with this, we have now implemented the back to course button. Let's now take care of implementing the previous and next navigation buttons. So for this, we're going to be using for the first time on this course, programmatic router navigation. We are not going to be using here the router link directive. Instead, because this navigation involves some logic, such as calculating the target navigation, depending on the current lesson position, we're going to be doing this in our component instead of the template. Let's start with the previous navigation button. So whenever we click on this button, we're going to be triggering a component method called simply previous, and we're going to pass it the current lesson that we are on. In a very similar way, in our next button, we are going to be calling a method called next. Let's go ahead and detect here the click event and let's call next and pass in the current lesson like we did here on the previous method. Let's implement this in our component. Let's start with the previous method. So the previous method is going to navigate to the previous lesson. We're going to navigate using the router service injectable. So let's go ahead and add it here in our constructor. So with the router uh, injectable, we can, uh, for example, trigger manual navigations. We can do so by using, for example, the navigate by URL method that takes a string, but we can also use here the navigate method that is going to take a similar set of arguments as we usually pass to the router link directive. In our case, as usual, we are going to be passing here an array of navigation segments. Like we did so far in the course, we are going to prefer to implement our navigation as a relative navigation instead of an absolute navigation. So I'm going to paste in here inside this comment the current URL address that we are on. So this is the address of lesson three of the Angular router course. So how are we going to navigate to the previous lesson? 
Well, before implementing that logic, it's important to realize that this previous method is only going to be available if the button is available here on the screen. And the button is going to be available to all lessons except the first. So we never will run into the case here in the implementation of the previous method of trying to navigate to a lesson before the first lesson. This method is only going to be available to all other lessons of the course except the first. So the lesson that we want to navigate to can be calculated by using the current sequential number of the lesson and subtracting one. The navigation is easier to implement if we implement it as a relative navigation to the current route. So let's pass in here after this array of segments, a configuration object, and let's specify here that we want to do a relative route navigation and let's specify here that we want to do a route navigation which is relative to this route here. So this is the parent route of the currently activated route. So we're going to pass in here the currently activated route and we are going to access here the parent route. So what we are saying here in this configuration object is that this navigation that we're going to specify here is relative to this route here. So as we can see, the first uh, path element that we need to pass in here is going to be the lessons segment. The second path segment that we need to pass in here is uh, the destination sequence number that we want to navigate to. So in order to calculate it, we are going to access the sequence number of the current lesson that we are on and we are going to simply subtract one. And as we have seen in the template, we are never going to run into the case when the sequence number is zero and we will navigate here to the sequence number minus one because this is not available for the first lesson of the course. Let's now in a very similar way implement the next method. So let's go ahead and create the skeleton of the next method and let's implement it by copying here this instruction and instead of navigating to the previous lesson, we are going to navigate to the next lesson. So in a very similar way to the case of the previous method, the next method is not going to be available to the last lesson of the course. So we are never going to run into the situation where we navigate into a lesson that it does not exist. And this is because here on the lesson detail component, this navigation button here is not available to the last lesson of the course due to the use of ng-if in a similar way to what we did here with the previous button. And with this, it might look like we have finished the implementation of our lesson detail component. But actually, when we try this out at runtime, this will not work. Notice here that in the constructor, we are logging uh, a statement whenever we create an instance of the lesson detail component. Let's then see what is wrong with this implementation. Let's switch here to a larger window and let's navigate, for example, to the third lesson of the course, the Angular Router Setup lesson. As we can see, we triggered here a backend request and we got back the correct lesson detail. We can see here that the title of the lesson is correct. Let's now test the Back to Course button. So when we click here, as we can see, the lesson summary table has been displayed correctly as expected. Now let's go back here to the third lesson of the course, which is correctly displayed, and let's now click on the next button. So as we can see, whenever we click on the next and the previous button, the lesson title and the duration is not getting correctly updated. So something is going wrong here. We are going to understand exactly what the problem is with the current implementation of the lesson detail component in the next lesson and we are going to fix it.